Welcome back to another podcast, another blog out of the book of John. We continue today in chapter 1 of John, verses 14 and 15, which reads, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning Him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. That's John chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. In verse 14, we learn that God made his dwelling among us. Notice it was his glory that caught John's attention. The Word, Jesus Christ, the God-man, made his dwelling among mankind as a man taken on a human body. He did this in order to reunite man with God. In the beginning, God designed man to bear his image. Man has always had a hunger and a capacity for God. He just hasn't known it. We long throughout life for that something that will meet our deepest need. That capacity was designed by God. God intended man to be the dwelling place of God. So the Lord Jesus came to this earth to make that a possibility. It's it's not his only dwelling place, but there's an intimacy that God wants us to have with him. There's no greater intimacy than the first two letters of that very word. The glory that John saw in the Lord Jesus was the glory of the one and only Son. And he was full of grace and truth. Grace and truth, that's the glory of God. Someone has designed or defined grace as that which God does within you and without you. Grace is love giving itself. The word grace does not occur again in John's gospel beyond verse 16 of this chapter. Truth, however, is mentioned many times, in fact, 25 times. The glory that God saw was he was full of grace and truth. Truth is the manifestation of reality. The unveiling of what is actually there. The stripping off of all the illusions, the veils, the facades, and getting down to what is actually there. Jesus is full of both grace and truth. He was the ultimate revelation of what is really real in life. And he is the fullest expression of love, giving itself. This is the glory that John John saw in the Lord Jesus. Aletheia, which is the Greek word used here for truth, is found 25 times in John's gospel. It is one of the key concepts in the whole whole gospel. God can be uh, our Father. He can be our God. He can be our substance. He can be that which we are longing for because he is the truth. He's not a truth. He's not even my truth. He's the truth. Truth is the combination of two Greek words. The letter alpha, which is the first letter in the Greek alphabet, and the word letho which means to conceal. And when you put them together, it means to unconceal or to open. Although John uses the word true, elethinos, in verse 9 of this chapter, he first uses aletheia in verse 14, and he repeats it in verse 16. The word made flesh was full of grace 
and truth. He was the full revelation or the unconcealing of God and the complete expression of his grace. Aletheia or truth is the full unconcealing of the Father through the Son. Grace and truth are really life and light as has been implied already in this chapter. Life at any level is a revelation in this case, it's the revelation of the love of the Creator, the giving of the Creator to His creatures, the sharing of His life with us. We have come to understand that love is an absolute necessity for life. We cannot function without it. Those who are deprived of love, either by circumstances or by their own poor choices, lose the capacity to live. They huddle in a corner or they assume a fetal position, I speak metaphorically, unable to do anything because love is life. Grace, therefore, is the source of life. Our problem is, is that God's love sometimes appears to be hatred. This happens when we try to define love rather than letting the one, the very author of it, define it for us. Truth is used by biblical writers to illustrate light, which is the comprehension of reality. We have all said, I wish I had more light on this subject. By that we mean, I wish I understood it better. I wish I saw more clearly what was there. The truth is light. The glory of the Lord Jesus was grace and truth, life and light. And in him it was and is full. He was and is full of grace and truth. The fullness of Christ is a theme carried throughout this gospel account. It is juxtapositioned by the emptiness of man. It's our empty, emptiness that captures our attention, causes us to turn to God. It was the fact that the Lord Jesus was full of grace and truth that John the Baptist, his older cousin by six months, noticed him. You know, all of his life he grew up playing with him. And he didn't notice him until that day, that day when he was 30 years old and he was eligible to be named a rabbi. It was Charles Spurgeon who once said, we will never know the fullness of Christ until we know the emptiness of everything else. My friends, I trust this podcast is, and this blog is helpful to you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of any other assistance to you, don't hesitate to send me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day. Yeah.